Hello, pilots of the internet. Welcome to Foldable Flight. My name is Kyle, and this is where I teach you how to fold paper airplanes that will blow your mind. In this video, I am teaching you how to fold Boomerang 2 from the world record fold and fly planes. Now, what this plane does is it actually flies out away from you, doubles over, and flies back to you. So this is a really amazing plane. And if you aren't familiar with the world record fold and fly planes in general, that's a collaboration between me and the world record holder for paper airplane distance, John Collins. And his plane flew 226 feet. And that's just one of the planes contained in this product. So what the product is, is it's, we took eight of John's very best paper airplanes, you know, the world record plane, a uh, plane that flaps as it flies, boomerang planes like this one that literally come back to you, and some others as well. We took eight of John's very best planes and I designed illustrated templates for them so that your plane can look like this rather than just a plain white sheet of paper. So if that interests you, head over to foldableflight.com slash shop or the paperairplaneguy.com slash shop and buy your copies there. Each package will contain three templates for each of those eight planes. So I'm going to uh, show you guys how this plane flies and then I'll pass it over to John to teach you how to fold it. going to start with the boomerang 2 paper and don't worry if you don't have this nice fancy paper this is available on both of the websites foldable flight and the paper airplane but you don't have to worry about that it works great with any eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper so uh start with boomerang 2 side down and you're going to want this little arrow up and the first thing to do is fold the sheet of paper in half i'm just going to move in just a little bit as i do this so it's a little easier for me to see the corners here a nice tight crease there okay so um, just like uh, the boomerang one plane uh, the one quarter measurement here is critical to get so if you don't have this fancy schmancy paper uh, what you're gonna do is find the center point first which is folding marking the center of this long crease and you're just gonna make a little pinch there after you line up these two corners make a little pinch on the creased edge there's the halfway point and now this band of color is pretty close to the quarter point if you're using the paper, but if it's if you're not, you're going to again find the quarter point by taking this corner down to that pinch that we just made and make another pinch right there. Okay, so, and on this one, we're actually going to make the crease. Instead of making just the pinch itself, like the boomerang one, we're going to make a full crease here. Unfold that. And now we're going to take this corner and fold it over to hit the crease. And so one end of the new crease that we're going to make is going to start here. It's going to rake down this way. And we're going to gauge how much to crease over by putting this corner against this crease that we just made there at the one quarter point. So just that edge just touches and the end of the crease goes all the way up to the top here. A little bit tricky. If it doesn't turn into be a, if it's not a really nice tight quarter, just work with it a little bit. As I'm doing here on this, just roll it out just a little bit more so you get a tighter crease there. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, you want to be as close to, to right as you can get it there. All right. Now we're going to squash this flap here. And that means we're going to start by lifting up this flap, opening it up. And this little pocket down here, we're going to press so that the center line on that pocket lines up with the center line right here. And it's okay if the center is just a little bit that way, just a little bit in front, because when you fold it over, the creases will, will line up. You'll see what I'm saying in just a second here. The center crease is just a little bit to the right-hand side of this edge. And so now, 
if I just tuck this guy under, follow that crease. Now this, this crease that I was talking about is now just right dead center there. And that's all good. So once again, we started here. We made a crease over to just, just touch this corner, just touching that one quarter mark. It rakes all the way up to the top. We squash and then we fold that guy behind. And now we're ready to start tucking these uh, corners here into this pocket here. And you'll notice that these corners are way too big to put in the pocket. If you just move one over, this is the first step in putting it in there. If you move this corner over, and you're going to move it down so that it's just short, just so that there's room in the pocket at the bottom. It's just going to be short of the actual pocket there. And then make a crease that goes back. So this corner is now just a little bit short of this pocket right here. Let's go ahead and do the other side while we can. It's easier to make a match that way. So we're flipping this guy over. And again, this corner is going to move down just so that it's a little bit short of this pocket right here. You kind of see that pocket right there. This corner is going to come down just, just to the inside of the corner there, just so there's room to put it in there when we get it moved over. And lining those guys up. And now we're going to start narrowing this corner so it will fit into the pocket. And the way we do that is to lift it up. And what we're going to do is follow this edge of the pocket. You can see that edge right there. We're going to follow with a crease that edge. And we're going to make a crease that goes, you know, it goes up. So you can see how the crease is going to go. If I unfold it, you can definitely see how that worked. Starting at this corner down here, and it's just getting creased up so that we're just to the inside of this pocket right here. So when you're looking at it, you can just see a little bit of space between this new crease and that edge of the pocket right there. And that, of course, is going to give us enough room, now that we've got the crease made, to go ahead and put that point into the pocket. So we're here, we've made the crease, we lift it up, and we just slide it right into the pocket, just like that. Now, things are going to look pretty weird and sloppy at this point, and all kinds of layers bulging up here. So the next move, obviously, is, is to flatten this out so we can continue making the other side. So the front of the pocket is going to be where you line this up, and the rear corners, the rear edge here, should end up pretty close to this edge. It doesn't have to be perfectly right on it, but it should almost perfectly line up with that when we squash this guy flat. So if it's a little bit off, don't sweat it. You can be a little bit off, but it could should come pretty close to lining up with this edge back here. Okay, let's flip it over and do the other side. Again, we're getting this corner in good shape to go into this little pocket down here. So we start by narrowing We're going to narrow that point. It's a little bit weird. You're going to have to look, uh, lift up the layers and look inside and figure out just where the edge of that pocket is. My hand is kind of blocking that. Sorry about that. I couldn't get a good eyeball on that from my vantage point. But let me, let me show you what we got going here. So there's the edge of the pocket right here. And this layer is starting here. And folding up just so that it's just to the inside of that pocket and the crease goes all the way up here all the way inside like that we've got that layer crease now so that it's just to the inside of that little triangular pocket that's where the crease gets made and then once you've made the crease it's pretty easy now it's small enough you just open up that pocket and slip that in there. And now, just like we did with the other side, the challenge is to squash it flat here. So you use the front of the pocket as a guide. And again, the rear of the plane. Uh, that raw edge should line up pretty close with the rear. I'm just going to spin it around here so I can take a look that I'm getting these edges right. Always want both sides of your plane to match. There we go. Looking pretty good. And now we're going to lift this, uh, start to lift this top layer back up. So now that we got it all put down there nice and flat, now we're going to make a crease that goes from this corner to the front of the pocket. We're just lifting this up. 
and it's going to go all the way to the front of the pocket there and then all the way to this back corner. And we're going to flip it over and do the same thing for the other side. Again, here and here are your points that you're going to pay attention to. But there should be a shortcut. You should be able to just make these corners match right here. And everything else should line up pretty closely. If you start at that front of the pocket and then can get these corners to match right there, should be pretty close. The colors on this plane are just so fun when you use this paper that we've worked on. Foldable Flight and the Paper Airplane Guy were worked, in, worked on these, uh, these colors. Foldable Flight came up with a great design for this plane. And uh, now what we're going to do is squash fold the body of the plane here. So we're going to start by moving the plane up so you can see inside. And then we're just going to open these layers up as we bring the two corners from the left-hand side. So really, it's, it's a squash fold, classic squash fold. You're just looking inside the opening and moving it down like this. And again, these two corners here are going to line up with the very center of the plane right here. So keep that going right in the center as you then squash everything flat. Really important that you stay on the center line here with all the corners. Probably may, you may need a little bit of a sweep, probably not much on this guy. I'm just going to pull out just a little bit so we can see the whole plane here. And uh, let's flip it so that the, this is the top of the plane or this is going to be the nose of the plane here. And what we're going to do now is uh, make landing gear and there's a, a an, a layer that's behind here that you're going to use as a reference. You're going to move this side over with the orange on the corner here. You're going to move it over to line up with an inside layer that you can't see. So here's how you make that layer visible. Take your thumbnail and just run it inside up against that layer. So now you've got a mark there and uh, you'll find it once you just kind of use the braille method here. Just back your thumbnail or your fingernail up against it. You can see where that layer is marked now. And now we're going to move this edge over to that mark. So here we go. And of course, we're going to do the same thing on the other side. And again, we're just going to find, find this inside layer here. Use my thumbnail again. And I'm just moving it so that I can find that edge. It's pretty easy to find. I'm making it look a little more mysterious than it is. It's really just this edge here. And so you're finding that with your thumbnail and just running against that. And then you're going to take this creased edge over to our thumbnail marked edge. And one more time, we're just going to go right against there like that. That's not too bad. Now, the other thing we're going to do here is let's unfold uh, these guys for just a moment. And... Then, and we're going to move these corners a little closer to the nose. That gives the plane a little bit better swing weight. Uh, when it stalls, it flips over and flies back upside down. This helps it swing back that direction. You can, if you're having trouble, if it's swinging too hard, um, or if it's not stalling enough, you can unfold these after you get the plane made. It's really easy to unfold them. But I suggest starting with these guys. And so let's just move in a little bit right here. Double check focus. And we're going to start by folding these guys under. Uh, to start that procedure, we're just going to fold them up first so you can make a, a good, get a good idea where that crease actually is. Move this edge up against this edge. Make a sharp crease. On the other side, do the same thing. Move the edge up. Now unfold, and we're going to use these two creases to then fold these layers underneath. So. Just follow those guys, fold that underneath, do the same thing to this guy, just fold it underneath. Okay, looking good. Let's pull out just a little bit here. Now we're going to rotate this guy this way. Let's flip it over. And now we're going to follow the center crease, just fold it in half. It's the very first crease that we made. We're remaking that crease. And to make the wing fold, this is a little bit like the Phoenix wing fold. You're going to roll this guy over and you're going to use this layer underneath is going to just touch this guy right here. So you have to, it's a little bit tricky. You have to keep track of where that corner is. 
And this layer is just going to touch that corner. So you have to, you know, lift it up a couple of times and, and take a peek that you're hitting the right spot there. And it's pretty good like that. On the colored paper, a little easier to see. The folded flight guy has made this a little simpler. This should come out really nicely for you right there. That little bead right there should work really nicely for you. And again, this, this layer just hitting that rear corner there. Uh, let's flip it over, make the other wing match. Pull in just a little bit so I can see everything a little bit nicer. Okay, looking pretty good. We're going to make winglets now. And if you're using our fancy paper here, you can see that you've got an edge right here. You can kind of see that edge going through there. That's uh, your clue visually on this great paper. But if you're not using our paper, you can move this corner up till it just touches this layer here, or just even a little bit short. The main thing is to make it parallel with this crease. This crease and this crease want to be going the same direction. Just like a set of railroad tracks, you want it parallel like that. Let's flip it over and make the other winglet. Okay, now you'll notice when you start to open the wings up that I didn't hit the corner of the nose here perfectly. Let's get this guy in focus. Hand out of the way there. So I didn't hit the nose right there. I left a little bit of space. And that's important for one adjustment that we're going to do so that the plane will fly a little bit better upside down. So um, here's uh, your basic adjusting here. Let's get, first of all, let's flip it over and get the winglets. Uh, or rather, landing gear. <laughs> they kind of act as winglets when the plane's upside down. Uh, let's get these winglets on top, go in the right direction. And the landing gear are pointed down. So his, this is the plane right side up. And make sure that, you know, it's matching on both sides. You don't want one side kind of off. This should be straight down. And the winglet should be straight up on both sides. There you go. Now, the other thing we're going to do here, the reason we left a little bit of room, is I'm going to bend over a little bit of that front edge of the nose on both sides. You're just kind of really pinching it down just a little bit on both sides. Like that. And the other critical thing, if your plane is uh, moving one direction or another on the way out, or particularly on the way back, the angle right here, let me get... Focus on that edge. There we go. So the angle right here that connects this layer to this layer, this side to this side, if those don't match, it's going to curve one, one direction or another. And you'll, you'll see this. You'll play with this. This looks pretty good right now. Um, this one's drooping just a tiny bit. So you want to just kind of flex it up like that. These guys, it's super important for those to match. It, to get your plane to go straight out and straight back, make sure that these two guys are leaving these two guys at the same angle. If they're not, you're going to get all kinds of trouble. So that's really one of the critical things. And then pinching the nose down here helps the plane fly a little bit better upside down. You can always add a little more up elevator right here to get the plane to stall correctly. And what you're looking for is for the plane to fly out uh, 10 to 12 feet, do this crazy stall and flip over and fly back upside down. Now, another good thing to do here, I'm going to pull out as I do this, flex the center crease back and forth a bunch of times. The center of the plane needs to be very flexible for the wings to open up. And so what you're looking for is positive dihedral on the way out. And then as the plane flops open, you've got positive dihedral upside down. And the way that's going to happen is the center crease is going to have to be very flexible on the plane. So a little nose pinch there, a lot of flexing back and forth here. I really work it. And the plane should, <laughs> with some practice on throwing and some practice on adjusting, you'll get that great boomerang two flight. The fly out, the flip over, the fly back upside down.